All right, welcome back to the One Bar and Lepagis show on this Victory Tuesday. It is time oh. to break down that Vikings big old win against Chicago in Chicago on Monday night. Yeah, Kirk Cousins breaking his streak of 0-9 on Monday nights. I have been bathing in the Vikings victory. I scrub my parts with it. it smells so delicious and fresh. Uh, and I think we should just hop right into it. Um, you know, let's talk about the offense first. I think that's something that we should talk about. Uh, surprisingly, especially in the first half, the, the Vikings, that first drive, moved the ball fairly easily against this Bears defense. Were you surprised by that at all? Um, yeah, I was pretty surprised. I wasn't surprised how they were doing it. Uh, they weren't getting overly aggressive. A lot of, a lot of dinks and dunks. They were pounding the ball, even though it wasn't going anywhere. But um, they were taking advantage of, advantage of Buster Screen, or especially that first half, looking at him early and often, and it was paying off those – those short passes were uh, were lovely. Yeah, that was awesome. And I think the the biggest difference in the is the Vikings O line. I mean, they they've been playing better in recent weeks, and they they matched the Bears' physicality up front. They were not overpowered. They were not overwhelmed. They held their own. They did have you know they did find room, open up holes in the running game. But I mean, Kirk Cousins. There were times he was standing up there forever, um, scanning the field, and finally I think he took off. I mean, there's just nobody open, but. Uh, plenty of time for him, and this was a really a great job by the O line all around. Yeah, plenty of time compared to what we're used to. I mean, it wasn't like just back there picking daisies or anything, but we're used to him having about two seconds, time. and it was done. So yes, job well done by that offensive line. Ezra Cleveland, you got to think is uh, is he just going to be a guard, like a very very good guard? I don't know. That sounds like a future video topic, if you ask me. Well, I'm just saying they they've groomed him at guard all year, and he's he's playing damn good. So that's something to keep an eye on. It makes you wonder. Um, you know, I suppose what happens in the draft coming up, how that all shakes out, whether the Vikings end up getting a left tackle uh, or a guard or something uh, that could maybe depend on uh, the future of Mister Ezra Cleveland. Um, you know, one thing I want to say too is Gary Kubiak. Kudos to him for sticking with the running game that wasn't always there uh, often. In fact, it was getting shut down most of the time, but he kept pounding Delvin Cook. How many times did he actually carry the ball? Let's just Delvin see. Delvin Cook, 30 for 96. 30, um, yeah, he had 30 carries for a 3.2 average. Uh, that was my biggest fear is Kubiak was going to abandon the run way too quick. Uh, we saw late he was able to break one, and I think one did come back from a holding with a holding call. But, um, yeah, he stuck with it, and uh, that was, a, um, you know, a hell of a commitment by Gary Kubiak to not shy away from the run game. Yeah, and a kind of BS holding call, but oh well, it is what it is. Uh, Kirk Cousins definitely needs, uh, deserves some love. 25 of 36, 292, two touchdowns, one pick that was definitely not his fault. He was uh, he was throwing some pretty good dimes. And then Justin Jefferson, 8 for 135, 10 targets. I mean, this dude, he is sniffing. He is sniffing that number one spot on this team. And I mentioned this in my room. You round up, you haven't watched that, be sure to check it out. But uh, what I love about Justin Jefferson is that he seems to do something different every time we see him out there. Um, last night, he showed toughness. He he cut that one ball over the middle, and then he, like, I think he had three bears draped on him, and he was still grinding, fighting, scrapping for some uh, extra yardage there, protect the football at the same time. You'd love to see that from this guy. I mean, not every rookie, not every receiver does that. Um, he You could tell he wanted this win. He wanted to get that first down, wanted to get as many yards as possible. Um You've seen him make plays in coverage. You've seen him turn on the Jets. Uh, you've seen him run amazing routes. Now you're seeing this tough side of him. Uh, Justin Jefferson, just a complete wide receiver. And the Vikings have to feel damn good knowing they got their number one wide receiver of the future on the roster right now. Yeah, and that 8 for 135 could have easily been 8 for about 170 because on a couple of those plays, he just lost his footing. He would have been gone, zo for the score. Um Offensively, other than that, uh, one thing I did enjoy that that we didn't talk about yesterday was when Roquan Smith had that uh, offsides, Garrett Bradbury just right in his face. That was fantastic. I love, I love that Garrett Bradbury is getting a little, uh, getting a little not nice in him. Yeah, I thought he actually swatted him in the head or something, but yeah, that was uh, that was sweet. That was right funny. there. Um, one thing I, you know, I was a little afraid the way the second or second half started uh, after the Bears. Kick return. Uh, the Vikings offense, that first drive, looked like what we've seen in recent games against the Bears. Um, stuffed on the run a couple times, and Kirk Cousins throwing the ball away, uh, whether he had to or not. And I thought, oh, God, here we go again. It's going to be what we've seen before. But I uh, got to give the team credit. They came out of that after that first kind of a stinker drive, and, and I think it was the punt return that changed that. But I don't want to jump too much on special teams because I think that's something we got to touch all together. Um, 
Yeah, I think point. we I think we put a pretty good bow on the offensive side of it. Um, I don't really have anything else to add. Chad Beebe is still getting his uh, two two looks a game, which is lovely. Um, but other than that, pretty pretty damn good. Uh, scheme Kubiak brought out well executed um, and really the only two whoopsies were some from seasoned vets that we really don't need to worry about that happening in the future so I'm not concerned about that one damn bit yeah you got Kyle Rudolph confident enough which he never does and that was a pretty damn close one and then um, Adam Thielen just letting him hit his body instead of catching with his hands um, that ended up flukily into the hands of Cleo Mack but uh, without those two turnovers this game wouldn't have even been close all right, let's talk defense. Yeah, uh, defensively, this was a damn good performance by the Vikings. D. The, the run defense was a little bit loose at the beginning of the game. That did tighten up in the second half. Um, the thing that impressed me the most was that the Vikings did take advantage of this patchwork Bears offensive line. Pressure all over the place. DJ Wanham, Hercules Madoff, Jalen Holmes was back here a few times. Um, it was just, it was great. As far as a pressure standpoint goes, this was definitely the Vikings' best performance of the season. Yeah, and it should have been, um, really. I'm not trying to take it away from them, but that offensive line was pretty brutal. Vikings holding the Bears to 149 total yards, 108 passing yards, held them to 41 yards on the ground. I mean, I don't know if it's because the Bears' offense is that shit or we just had a very good game, but the Bears – they looked horrible out there. I mean, one of their touchdowns obviously was on that special teams, but anytime they had the ball, it didn't even seem like it was even going to be close. I mean, I know the score was close, but it was tough to watch. Yeah, you know, it's probably a little bit of both. The Vikings play well, but then the Bears uh, actually, you know, suck on offense. Um, but the thing is here, I mean, you, you want to take advantage. When the, when the team goes in with a bad offensive line, you see it sometimes where it doesn't make a difference. Uh, the Vikings definitely exposed that. And this was a rare game where I wasn't worried that the Bears had the ball late because they weren't doing shit. It was like the Vikings were just feasting off them, and they really had no chance. Um, even with, you know, getting the ball back with, what, 40-something seconds left, there wasn't really much of a concern there, even late when they had it. It was just like this, you know, the defense was just owning them last night, especially late in the game. Yeah, when they were bringing the house on Nick Foles, um, there was no no chance, and they continued to do that. It was wonderful. You already mentioned a lot of the guys that pretty much had a big impact on defense. Hercules Mataf, DJ Wanham getting in there. Eric Wilson, again, just hearing those dollar signs go off for next year. Mm. One one guy I really like. Uh, I really like that Chris Jones. He's uh he can stick a tackle. He's he's not bad for just pretty much coming off the street. It's like John Gruden there. I really like this Chris Jones. I do. I like that Chris Jones. Uh, you got Tiger Harrison Smith. He had a big pick. He almost had another one. Um, yeah, it was just uh, Vikings defense was humming. Mike Zimmer's got to be given a ton of credit for the way these corners are coming on late. Um, they're finally maybe figuring out his schemes and when to back off, when to come up, who to cover. Uh, it seemed like they're really just – I kind of like the way Gladney, Jones, and Boyd work together. They seem to kind of feed off each other and know what the other ones are going to do. So uh, that's a nice little trio there, at least right now. Yeah, Gladney is coming into his own. Uh, Mike Zimmer in his press conference after the game, you can tell this guy loves Harrison Smith probably more than anybody else on the entire earth. And Harrison Smith had that beautiful interception, but that pass breakup he had was almost better. Uh, yeah. This dude's a handsome son of a bitch, and he can play one hell of a safety. Yeah, I never uh, really thought he was that handsome until he grew those locks out. Now I look at him, and I'm just I'm stunned. I'm so pretty. Yeah, so defensively, these guys, they're uh, they are underdogs. They're playing out there. They're playing gritty. They're, they're trying to make a mark, and it is working so far. So hats off oh. to that defense. Zimmer had one hell, hell of a game. You said the word mark, and I think that's something we got to talk about next. There was one oozing, festering mark of a sore on this game that kept the things. It wasn't just the turn turnovers. It was this game should have been a cakewalk for the Vikings, especially in the second half. But special teams – Again, two weeks in a row, this is a huge sore on this team. It is a death mark uh, against the Lions, two block punts. Last night, you see a, a kick return touchdown. Uh, Dan Chisino with his boneheaded uh, downing the ball pretty much in the end zone. Bad, two bad snaps from Austin Cutting. One, Britton Colquitt was able to save early. The second one, he pretty much just rolled it. So I don't know what Marwan Malouf is doing, but you saw Zimmer just screaming at him on the sidelines. Uh, that guy's got to be in the hot seat, and the Vikings special teams definitely got to turn things around here moving forward. 
Yeah, Zimmer, they asked him if his uh, special teams keeps him up at night, and he just said yes, and that is very, very valid. Did you mention? Did you even mention Austin Cutting? Uh, yeah. Brutal. I would be very surprised if – I'm sorry, I was still trying to figure out what de death mark meant. Uh, so <laughs> special teams, we don't even need to really talk about that much. It, it, all The whole yeah, thing too. was an absolute mess. Absolute what? mess from Dan Bailey. I'll give him a pass. Uh, except for, you know, kicking it to Patterson. And then he had that line drive. All right, I'm taking the pass away. But it was it was bad. All these guys should be very worried about their jobs, including the coach. Yeah, I mean, what's most concerning is two weeks in a row. This isn't just like a, a, a fluke here. We, we saw a, a different aspect of the special team struggle last week. I mean, who has two block punts in a game? And then a kick return, just some boneheaded plays, just execution things. Um Thank God, Josh. I mean, they did have one saving grace when Josh Mattel has got that fumble recovery that doinked off of whoever the hell was turned for the Bears. It was Anthony Miller. I don't remember Mooney. I don't remember who it was. But uh, yeah, this area definitely, especially the Vikings, you're making a push here into the playoffs or, or for a playoff spot. This is one area they have to clean up. And that was, that was Dwayne Harris that bounced off of. And the reason I remember that is because Dwayne Harris doesn't do that. It was meant to be. It was it was lovely. But Jacina. Dude, I don't, I don't know what he, he's he's never done anything yet. I'm, I can't wait for him to just have a spectacular play where we're all just get back on the Jacina bandwagon. But until then, they got a lot of work to do to 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 shore up that special teams, get some confidence back in them because right now there is zero. Yeah, absolutely zero all zero. Right, so well, overall, great game for the Vikings going into Chicago on Monday night, exercising some demons, ending that four game losing streak. Kirk Cousins ending his Monday night losing streak. Uh, and, then, and then the best part about it, the Vikings are now four and five. Um, I don't, you know, this is definitely a team that can't overlook anybody, but the schedule coming up is not overly difficult. So this is definitely a team that could be back in the thick of things here in a couple of weeks. Yeah, they're uh, they're not in the thick of things yet, but they're going to get close enough where they can start smelling the thick of things. They're, they're behind the Bears for the or no, they're, they're three game, th three teams out. Seattle needs to really start maybe tanking a little bit, maybe the Rams, but the Vikings will get some wins in this next couple of weeks. Where I would say in three weeks we we might be starting to smell smell it. It smells so good. All right, you want to do the turd or the oh stud. Let's start with the let's start with the turd of the game. Who do you got for the turd of the game? Uh, we already talked about him a little bit, but it is my boy Dan Shasina. Um, I don't know what the Vikings saw in him that made him make this fast. Team. I, was I was expecting him to just be a, a special teams stud this year, like like a Matthew Slater kind of a guy, just flying down there making hits. I haven't seen it, and then you see him uh, just you know down that punt take like a little step back and then his ankles are clearly on the line. Uh, he's, that's not his first boneheaded play on special teams this year. He's had a few of them. I know he's a rookie. I know he's undrafted, but um, the Vikings kept this guy and I'm just not seeing why at this point. Yeah. And I will give him this. He's usually the first one down there. I mean, so he's clearly fast. He just never does anything very good when he gets down there. Uh, I'm sticking on special teams. I'm going Austin cutting. Come on, snap the damn ball. <laughs> Tough to watch. I, I I would be I would not be surprised if he is replaced with one more bad snap. Bad. He looks like a a thirteen year old boy who hasn't hit puberty yet. You just see get, him on the sidelines. Get call get get Le Leffler back there. He's probably just hanging out at home. His finger's still over in like New York or something. Well, he, he could do better than that. But special teams, clean it up. Let's end on a good note. Stud of the game. Who is your oh stud? Uh, I'm going to go with a little bit of a deep cut here. Um, obviously, you could go Jefferson, you can go Kirk Cousins, but I'm going to go uh, defensive side of the football. I'm going Hercules Mata'afa. Uh, the stats don't really show it with two tackles and a tackle for a loss, but he was consistently uh, in the Bears' backfield. Uh, I think the majority of the pressure revolved around Mata'afa going back there and, and being one of the guys uh, just putting the heat on Nick Foles. And this has been two weeks in a row now. Ever since he got cut, put that clown face on Twitter, uh, and, and then he came back. He, he's playing like he's got something to prove, and he's proven it. Uh, Hercules Mata'afa, well done, and uh, God, I hope he keeps it up. Yeah, and they're, they're moving him all along the defensive line, switching things up for him, so working well. He did tweet last night that he can play football, so uh, he's very excited. He doesn't see – he yeah. seems like a guy who can get riled up pretty damn easy, which is good. 
Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sticking on the defensive side of the ball as well. Harrison Smith, just a all out animal out there. Not only just the interception, he almost had another one, but again, that pass breakup, laying big hits, just proves week in and week out why he's going to be up in that ring of honor someday. Yeah, he's uh, he's beautiful. Uh, again, you know, we should have had two interceptions. Like you said, that pass breakup, I was just com- so perfectly timed. Um, you just can't ask for a better guy to have back there. And uh, yeah, Harrison Smith, well done, well done. All right, well that wraps up our uh, post game vid. Vikings are four and five, uh, climbing up the NFC North. Pretty soon we'll be looking down on everybody. I'm sure. Early, early, early. <laughs> All right. We'll be back with plenty of more vids, uh, especially later today with what we learned about this game. But until then, remember this, Sir Isaac Newton, he died a virgin.